Hello everyone, and this is my review for Impact Wrestling on April 20th, 2017, and I'm not going to lie. Nope, nope, nope. This show was doing well, and then they brought back the commentary thing again. Not going to lie to you. Took it complete took me completely out of the show in every way shape or form and you know uh, I wish it felt like it was good and creative and everything in that sense because uh, I love like I said I like the Michael Cole heel thing because they usually kept it on topic here it doesn't feel like they're ever keeping it on topic. It's it's more of Josh Matthews wanting to be annoying and talking about himself and how he does, how he used to do everything. Where, at least is how I remembered it, Michael Cole was just basically siding with heels and doing other things. And maybe slightly talked about himself every now and again to go along with it. And to be honest with you, it the second they brought Josh Matthews back out there tonight, I wanted to mute that television really badly uh, but you know I'll, I'll get into that a little bit more towards the end of the show uh, towards the end of everything because a lot of it happened midway through to the end of the show uh, so we'll just go ahead and start from the beginning of the show they start off the show with LAX going up against I think the names were uh, Jake Holmes and Joe Corbin uh, in a match and apparently was also for the tag team tiles or at least it was announced as such uh, squash match nothing much to it it was uh, this week um, we had Santana and Ortiz as the members of LAX being uh, being out there and wrestling inside the ring matter of fact we haven't seen anything from homicide in the ring I don't know if he's gonna be doing something X division style um, and uh, we haven't seen too much uh, from the one female member yet, which her name is slipping my mind. I'm going to have to remember all their names at one point uh, in, in time. Uh, Conan comes out there and basically cuts a, a promo on the new LAX. He introduces each member and what they can do and what they're supposed to, like what they're supposed to represent and how they're going to start. A, a revolution uh, within the company, and they and one of the final things he ends out saying is that yeah, you can kill the um, the uh, you can what was the particular term? Because I don't know, I don't remember the, remember the beginning, but the ending was you can't stop the revolution from happening, which is what they're gonna gonna be doing within this uh, aspect of the this faction, this tag team, and they get interrupted immediately by Decay, who uh, basically they start brawling all, they kind of all members kind of start brawling over the place. Decay gets a little bit more of the advantage. Uh, Conan helps them out in the end, uh, and it does actually. Lead Lead to them announcing that there will be a street fight next week for the tag team titles with Decay and LAX. Uh, I, honestly, with with the exception of the aspect of the squash match, I like the segment. It sets up for something for next week. It continues on with a, a, a potential storyline to go along with everything. We'll see where they go with everything to go along with this. Up next, Karen Jarrett comes out. Uh, one of the first things she announces is that Global Force Wrestling, or GFW, is merging with Impact Wrestling. Well, Global Force Wrestling didn't last long. Not going to lie on that one. Uh, not going to lie on that uh, on that side of everything. Matter of fact, for people who didn't know much about Global Force Wrestling, it was started by Jeff Jarrett and Karen Jarrett and probably a couple other people after uh, they got... Uh, out of Impact Wrestling or TNA way back in 2014. They kind of started this up and said that there was going to be a big wrestling boom and everything to go along with it and that this was going to be one of those helpful things to go along with that. They had done some house shows and apparently they had done some TV tapings as well, but no one took in the TV uh, side of everything for them. They had champions and everything to go along with that. And it seems like we're going to get an influx of global force wrestling people coming into Impact Wrestling at this point in time, which you 
get an indication of that with the factor that Sanjay Dutt is the first one that actually interrupts everything. And he was saying that, that they should do something completely different. They should make the X Division title match tonight, the main event, and then he wants added into the main event to make it a triple threat match. Uh, here's one thing that I'm not liking about it. Uh, I like the aspect that Andrew Everett comes out. It was, like, it was supposed to be one-on-one -on -one with him, and he wanted to keep it that way. And I like the aspects, you know, that Shane Helms and, every, and, uh, and Trevor Lee come out, and they want to keep it one-on-one -on -one as well uh, with everything in that sense of it. Uh, and, that, and one thing that Shane's, Shane Helms says is, like, he's the runner of the X Division. He's the one in charge and everything in that sense. This does bring out Bruce Pritchard, which, instead of making it a triple threat match for the main event, he makes it... A six-way match or a six-pack challenge, however you want to end up saying it, uh, in, in that sense of everything. And uh, you were going to have Sanjay Dutt going up against Andrew Everett and Trevor Lee, and they would announce the other three uh, throughout uh, throughout the evening uh, to go along with it. Um, uh, not a bad segment. Uh, I, I like the aspect of. Andrew Everett's reactions throughout this entire time. It's like he was disappointed. It's like he was looking to have the one-on-one -on -one match. But now it just like this guy comes out there and does that. Even though he's the baby face and all this. It's like this guy comes out here and uh, basically makes it a, a six-pack challenge out of nowhere to go along with it. Was looking for it to only be a triple threat, but then ends up being a six-pack challenge. Uh, they show a video package for Crimson who was talking about, he, first of all, he went by his real name first, but he had said, he had said better known as Crimson. So it looks like Crimson's back in Impact Wrestling and kind of talked about what he was about and everything in that sense. And they say that he's going to be showing up next week. So it looks like Crimson's going to be back in the company as well. Um, I didn't mind Crimson that much. I, I didn't think he was all that great, but I did not mind him back when he was in the company initially. So it'll be interesting to see if he's improved any and if he's improved Mike-wise and everything in that sense. Uh, up next was the knockouts title match, which was ODB versus Rosemary. Uh, this was an okay match. Uh, typical ODB spots. I was never a big fan of ODB back in the day. Um, she never really... She never really resembled like a serious competitor towards a title, at least in my own personal opinion. Uh, she felt more of just a gimmick. Uh, than anything uh, anything else. Rosemary does end up winning this with the Red we red Wedding, uh, and I thought the match was fine. It was kind of your typical stuff that you got from ODB and Rosemary in this case. It wasn't a bad match by any stretch of the imagination, but it wasn't anything all that great to go along with it. Um, you had another segment back, uh, backstage where you have Bruce Pritchard and Karen Jarrett. They were talking about the X Division title match for later in the evening. They were getting interviewed by, uh, by one of the people backstage. And they said that Suicide was going to be inside of the match. And that uh, the, fourth and, uh, the fifth and sixth person would be announced at a later time. Um, uh, but uh, as Bruce Pritchard goes to leave, Sienna comes in and starts talking with Karen Jarrett. And so she was like, we see a bunch of the Global Force Wrestling people in here. Where's their women's champion at? And, she, uh, and everything in that sense. And Karen's like, oh, she'll be here. You just better be ready. And Sienna was like, yeah, okay, I'm always ready. And walks off. Does the little pinky thing. She's doing the, the classy pinky thing right now uh, with everything. Um... Not a bad segment. Uh, I'm slowly but surely, is especially since they're kind of not really pushing a lot with Karen Jarrett. She's not really uh, intertwined in all the uh, in the storylines in the terms of her either wanting to get rid of people or this or this or this or this or this. Or this. Um, it, it's not as bad as I initially thought it would could have been because I remember Karen Jarrett's, Jarrett's stuff when she was initially in in the company like she had her own talk show thing and she was doing this the, a bit with the knockouts and everything to go along with it and I wasn't a big fan of it I'm still not really I, I don't really care for Karen Jarrett on the sc on the television screen but uh, it's what we've got for the time being so we'll see how anything how everything goes off with this in the end uh, it's not as bad as I thought it would be though uh, up next you had Chris Silva going up against Congo Kong this was a squash match, but uh, the, the thing about this was 
This guy can move. This guy can move around the ring pretty well and a pretty good clip to go along with it. Uh, and the aspect that they showed towards the end of the match was the as it wasn't the aspect that he does a big splash off of the top rope. It's the fact of how much of the ring he cleared, which was more than half of it. He it was like from uh, from the corner he jumped to it had to be past half the ring that he made, and it looked very impressive. Uh, like this guy can move around pretty good for the size that he is and everything, and he could be an interesting one with this whole aspect of KM and Sienna to go along with everything. And we'll see how everything plays off with that. Uh, plays off with him being in there and everything in that sense. Up next, you had a James Storm promo about the world title match later that night saying that, you know, Bobby Lashley, the last thing you were going to hear was sorry about your damn luck. Uh, talk about how important the world title was to him. It, you know, normal intensity from James Storm, but, you, you know, kind of baby face just promo for it. Matter of fact, it's always it's kind of hilarious to see how quickly it's like, I'm back to the cowboy after doing this DCC thing for months. And it's like, literally, I'm the cowboy James Storm again. Just complete change. <laughs> uh, uh, completely out of nowhere. It's like, no subtle change to it. It's like, nope, we're just forgetting that happened over there. And I'm just cowboy James Storm again. Back to drinking beer and all that fun stuff. Um, so this does bring us to that match, actually, next. Uh, because they had made... Um, they had made the X Division title match to go on last tonight. So it was James Storm versus Bobby Lashley. Josh Matthews comes out with Bobby Lashley. And uh, on my notes here, this is what I ended up writing uh, on my notes. Josh Matthews comes out. And I instantaneously want to mute the volume. Because I already know where this is going to go. And it pretty much was where it ended up going. Where he's trying to be obnoxious and talk about himself. And be the, uh, be the you know cheerleader for Bobby Lashley to go along with. Actually, I don't have a problem with that side of it. At least it sticks to what's going on inside the ring. Uh, on that portion of it. So that's not so bad. Um, but just... Yeah, uh, I don't want to hear it again. We we we've heard something like this. A lot of wrestling fans have heard something like this in the past. I don't think it's that good. And whatever. Uh, EC3 comes out uh, at the beginning of the match, and he want and he instantaneously is like he wants to just sit down, Josh Matthews, and he kind of just mills around, uh, mills about out there. He doesn't really do much of anything inside of the match until the end of the match, where. Uh, the referee gets knocked down. Uh, they had already brought a steel chair. Uh, they had already brought a chair into the ring, um, and James Storm brought in a beer bottle. Uh, EC3 grabs the beer bottle and hits James Storm with it to allow Lashley to pick up the victory. And what was honestly uh, a match that was given a lot of time. It was. It started right at. Well, for me, it would have been about six o'clock because the show airs at five out here in Arizona right now. Um, and it went to about 6.30. It was a good long match. Uh, good back and forth from James Storm and everything in that sense. Uh, James Storm and Bobby Lashley and everything in that sense. Both, both sides kind of trying to go for the finishers but not really being able to hit it. Of course, James Storm only being able to hit that finisher after the referee's been knocked out uh, to go along with that. Uh, you know, Lashley trying to bring in a chair. Uh, inside of the match, which uh, backfired on him, which almost allowed James Storm to win. Like they teased wins for James Storm in here, and I thought it came off rather as a rather good match. Uh, it was a really enjoyable match to watch. As soon as I muted the volume, so I didn't have to hear Josh Matthews uh, at that point in time. Um, so uh, up next, right before the main event, they did another interview backstage with Moose. And they had shown footage right beforehand of Chris Adonis attacking him and one, uh, at one of the um, other indie events. Uh, and, you know, saying that he was going to go after the... Basically saying he's going to go after the Impact Challenge, uh, the Impact Grand Championship. Uh, Moose comes back, he challenges Chris Adonis for the next week. Uh, and then Chris Adonis comes in, he's uh, coming in with an arm sling, and he's... Um, uh, saying he has a broken arm, saying that he doesn't ha uh, that he can't go next week, but he knows someone who can. And Davy Richards attacks Moose, so it's going to be Davy Richards um, 
ha, uh, going after Moose for next week with the Impact Grand Championship, which should be an interesting, which should be an interesting match. Again, I still wish they would make a full-on division out of that Grand Championship title, but it seems like we are only going to get the championship matches to go along with it. And also, Chris Adonis, last week you're a babyface, and this week yeah, immediately, immediately a heel. Uh, just go full on heel. You also had a bit with uh, Magnus as well, right before the world title match, where he was talking about Alberto El Patron, and it seems like he's kind of semi going heel himself. It's kind of weird, like how they went babyface just for this one match, and as they come in, it's like, oh, we need more heels. You guys. There you go. That, that works. That works. Um, yeah. Uh, interesting way of going with it. Uh, so I think I feel like we're gonna get a Magnus Alberto El Patron um, storyline coming here as well uh, down the road, and that should be an interesting one to see as well. So this brings us to the main event of the night, which I have very mixed feelings about because this match was really good, and the ending to the actual match was really good. It was just how they went off the air. That really sucked. So, it was Sanjay Dutt going up against Suicide, going up against Andrew Everett, Trevor Lee, and a newcomer that I hadn't really seen I hadn't really seen before. And um and Desmond Xavier. Uh anyone watching this might know who who he had been like what he had been working with and everything in that sense. I haven't seen any of his stuff yet. Maybe I have and I'm just not recognizing. I don't know. But the final member was Loki. So Loki comes back to Impact Wrestling. Uh, I, was like, uh, I was like, okay, who could they actually get that would be interesting and everything in that sense? And I wouldn't be like, huh? And it will be Loki. I was like, okay, that's a good choice right there. And apparently he's sporting a new Agent 47 gimmick, uh, inspired gimmick, and he's even wrestling inside of a suit um, with uh, with the whole thing to go along with it. Um, not a big fan of the whole wrestling inside of a suit thing, but I guess if you're going to play off the Agent 47 thing, where even his um, his Tron in the background has like the, the barcode uh, and low-key like, uh, symbols going on for it to go along with it. Uh, not a bad look. Uh, I was thinking, it's like, yeah, that's a cool way of going. going. He's going to be like a hitman. And then you would figure it's like, okay, just like what, Sh what Seamus does with the James Bond thing, he takes off the suit and then you go about it. Apparently not. <laughs> Apparently not in that way. He wrestled in that suit the entire time. Matter of fact, he started out in the jacket. He did lose the jacket at some point in time during the match. I'm not sure where. But also, Sanjay Dutt got hurt somewhere in this match. Not sure what spot it ended up being because you did get a lot of uh, simultaneous dives and everything to go along with it. But his eye was clearly swollen shut through a good chunk of the match. Uh, and he was still doing the spots and everything in that sense afterwards too. It's like he did not really, uh, like he didn't really go for uh, big spots himself all that much. But he was like, if he was supposed to take a spot, he actually took the spot with the person uh, to go along with it. Uh, the ending came where it looked like Andrew Everett was going to win the match, but the new and improved low-key, a.k.a. Jim 47, does that springboard uh, kick that he does uh, to people that are on the top rope and gets rid of them, does the way of the warrior to Trevor Lee to gain the victory and win the X Division title. Again, really, really, really fun match. Josh Matthews made this so annoying to watch. I should have just kept the entire volume like down the entire time, but I guess to do the reviews, I have to actually listen in through all of that to go along with it. It makes me wish I had turned down the volume uh, all the way because they went into this focus where Josh, like after the match, and like they're they're saying is like it was good to have Lee, Low Key back and trying to uh, uh, praise Low Key and the other guys for the match. And Josh Matthews continually talks about himself, talks about himself, and you even have Poco like. If this is supposed to be about him right now, and you're trying to make it about yourself. And then Poe just kind of takes off the microphone. It's just like, I'm done. I'm out. Screw this. Uh, and then jo and then Jeremy Borash literally just like forearms Josh Matthews. And that is, that's how they go off the air. They took the focus away from the guy who won in the main event to continue this commentator thing. And it... 
just I'm gonna chill before I throw something because it was very annoying and it came off piss poor and I, to be honest with you this is one of those few times that you're gonna hear me go off and rant about anything because I'm an easily entertained guy and I'm finding this annoying and I'm finding it bad and it shouldn't be there but yet it's there I wish it ended last week but yeah you know I said last week it's like you know they're gonna just do something to get around this in, in some way shape or form and what was that thing is like oh I did leave for a week yeah <sighs> Not too pleased about that uh, about that aspect at the end of the match, that they took literally all the focus away of a guy who had just come back in, and won the match. To do, this, they could have done this at any other point in the show. I probably wouldn't have gone on that rant, but guess what? They didn't. They didn't go that route. They waited to the end of the show to do this, and uh, yeah, I, I didn't like it. Uh, otherwise, a rather, rather good show for the most part. Uh, outside of that, outside of the whole commentator thing, which again, like I feel like, just takes away so much from uh, some of the rest of the show to go along with it. But otherwise, a pretty good impact. I enjoyed that six-pack challenge match at the end. I did not enjoy what they did afterwards. Uh, the James Storm Bobby Lashley match. I thought it was good, and you know, lo and behold, EC3 heel turn, uh, what we were kind of expecting over the last couple weeks. I, I'm liking what I saw from Congo Kong so far as well, and uh, it'll be interesting to see where they go with a lot of this stuff down the road, with the exception of Josh Matthews and Jeremy Borash. I don't want to see any more of that, but we're going to have to if we're going to continue on watching Impact Wrestling for the time being. Oh boy. We'll see where they go with everything, and hopefully they end this whole thing with Josh Matthews and Jeremy Borash very soon. Otherwise, show's doing good. Otherwise, show is doing good at this point in time. And with that being said, everyone, this is my review for Impact Wrestling this week. And I thank you guys for watching, and I hope you have a great day.